many of your viewers might know, Churchill Downs, the track is one thing, but there's also a company that goes with Churchill Downs. And they've been uh, publicly traded for a while. They're on the NASDAQ. And the gambling business in general, the wagering business in America, continues to grow. And uh, that's a little part of this. Also, the revenue that comes in around the Derby is significant. You'll have 100,000 people here today for the Kentucky Oaks, which is a little bit later on on NBCSN. That's the biggest race of the year for Phillies, the three-year-old Phillies. And then the Kentucky Derby's tomorrow, about 175,000 people. You mentioned the economic impact on the city of Louisville in this area. Obviously, at the track, with all these folks coming in and spending their money, there's enough to bump up the purse a little bit. I can imagine. Uh, it's interesting. Um, Mike, so in the last four years, we've had two Triple Crown winners, including last year. Yes. That is a tough act to follow. So who are people looking at? Where, where would you tell our viewers to put their money this weekend? Oh, no way. I, I can't give money financial advice here on CNBC, <laughs> can I? But he, here's what I will say. The Triple Crown is very rare. It didn't happen for 36 years. And then we've had two in the last four years. Last year, it was justified. So extremely rare. But it does happen in clusters historically over a century of horse racing. There's no super horse coming in this year. It doesn't mean a horse can't do it. What needs to happen is the horse needs to win here. Then two weeks from now in the Preakness, three weeks after that, the Belmont. Horses never run three races that close together. So it's a little bit of luck. It's a little bit of good health. And it's a lot of a terrific horse. Omaha Beach was the horse that was the favorite coming in. That horse was scratched on Wednesday. There is no blemish on whoever wins because it wasn't considered this unbeatable horse. There are three horses trained by Bob Baffert, who's the best trainer in the country right now. And those three horses are for right now the favorites. But any one of a half dozen horses could win come tomorrow afternoon. Sure. Those are Roadster, Game Winner, and Improbable. All right. I, I got time to ask yes. you one more. So I got to decide whether it's sure. going to be about J the Japanese business model angle here, which is fascinating with this new horse, Master Fencer, and a whole new line of right. betting that I guess is going to come uh, in Asia because of that. But, but frankly, Mike, I'm going to ask you what you think about the Giants <laughs> taking Daniel Jones. <laughs> What do you think? Very good. That's, that's a good pivot. Nobody's ever done that pivot on me in the history of television. Uh, Daniel Jones, we had him uh, against Notre Dame when Duke played Notre Dame. Good quarterback, very similar to Eli Manning, taught by David Cutcliffe, his college coach at Duke, is a terrific coach, and was the offensive coordinator for Peyton Manning at Tennessee in college 21 years ago, and then the head coach for Eli Manning at Ole Miss. Daniel Jones is a good quarterback. Six is probably a little bit steeper than people thought he would go in the draft, maybe more in the middle of that first round. But Dave Gettleman and the Giants, we're talking betting, right? They've gone all in on this is going to be the guy to replace Eli Manning. In a couple of years, we'll find out if it was the right move or not. Good thing for them, they don't have to throw Jones into play on week one. He can learn from Eli this year, maybe next year. The question is, could you have used a number six overall pick for a more immediate impact? Because that's where draft yeah. picks have been coming out on the field a little bit quicker.